Now, when I saw that, I thought, oh, we're in, <laughs> you know, because there's no way you're getting that from one circuit. Welcome back to the channel, and this is continuation and improvements of the power chip from the last video. And as a quick overview, the idea is to take lots of oscillators that just has one positive connection and the rest that are negatives, somehow shrink it all down at some point in the future to hopefully something that looks a lot like a computer chip. So the little pins on the bottom would replicate what you see there and it become a portable, quite powerful device. If indeed I can get these to work properly, you can see now there's only about three running. And so I've got to change those out. I've got to change out the magnesium because you can't solder to it. And then what I'll try and do is to link them up and see if we can get all of them producing energy to go into a capacitor and make a decent output. And that'll be a really good step forward. So one step forward as well, I might be using these. I found this packet of zinc screws. So I'm gonna try soldering wires to those and get more of these running. That's the first job. Well, apologies for the lower lighting, but I'm actually surprised that these are indeed all flashing now. Not as good as with the magnesium, but with these zinc nails, uh, these screws, they, <laughs> it's actually working and all 10 are running fine. So yeah, about 0.6 volts using a zinc screw and a piece of copper compared to about, what was it, 1.6 volts if you use clean magnesium. But these are reliable and that's an important side. All right, on to the next bit, the next upgrade. Here's just some closer footage of all 10 running. And finally, it's running. This is the very first run. It seems to be about 2 volts from these 5 circuits. But you can see that blue LED is on there. And uh, wow, it's been a little journey. And I'll take it into the other room now for better lighting and setup. And tell you how it's connected. So, now that it's back out onto this table, I can tell you what I've done. And unfortunately, it is a mess, but you can see that I changed things around lots so neatness wasn't going to be how I was going to do it. What I've got is of course I clipped off the LEDs, took the tops off them so now we have on the left hand side of each is the negative, on the right hand side is the positive so they're the usual connections to an LED. Instead I've got a diode on each one and then a 22 UF capacitor and all of those are linked in parallel such that the output voltage I'll show in a second is around about 2.3 volts and that's per row of five so things are now quite exciting for expanding the amount of them and uh, you know getting a proper decent system running I'll put it in the water in a second and we'll have a look at it a bit further but just to say you can see the screws there, the zinc screws are what I'm using now, far more reliable, but only 0.6 volts when combined with the single copper in the top left. I'll record this being dropped in because it is quite interesting how it starts up. So I'll put the thing in the water, those lot you can see immediately start to flash, but the blue LED begins to pulse. You can see it's on really quite well. Um, if I try and shield them like there we are, you see. Now, when I saw that, I thought, oh, we're in, <laughs> you know, because there's no way you're getting that from one circuit. When you look at the output of the other LEDs there, this blue one is radically different. And that's with five circuits connected in this way. And now I've connected the meter, and you can see 2.36 is the voltage from five oscillators. So I am thoroughly delighted with this and the next stage of which, well the next stage of which is to order more components and uh, get a lot bigger system but the 2.36 there using just the, the single copper piece, wow that is that is great, that's fantastic and thanks very much for watching.